Hey there everyone, welcome back to Game Vine, and my name is Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look and or reviewing a dexterity game called Vila Paletti. And back in 2012, this actually won the Spiel des Jahres Best Board Game of the Year in Germany back, of course, in 2012. Uh, there is a little bit of argument uh, about that, and some say this game shouldn't have won it, but that's neither here nor there, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, this game is different than your normal dexterity game, whereas you get to use a tiny little hook to guide some of the things around, which is pretty interesting, and it's pretty eye-catching. This is actually produced by Zoc nowadays. This is the Wiggles 3D versions of it and I actually like the art that's on it kind of mad TV uh, esque all the pillars are, are cartoons and I like the art the what Zoc does right now is decent art but it's kind of just very stoic I like the fun play of this this of course is out of print but you can find Vila Paletti if you look for it uh, and of course it's produced by Zoc right now uh, so let's get into how to play this game, but first let me show you what actually comes in the box. Okay, so in the box of Vila Paletti, it, you get quite simply a lot of wooden components. Um, and four different colors, we have the post here uh, in three different post styles. Each of them are different score denominations, but I'll get into that a little later. We have the big one here, we call it the chunker. We also call the next post here hex, of course, being the shape of one, or a hexagon, of course, and the uh, thin ones or the small ones, we call them that as well. Those come in four different colors. Uh, so those are the posts, uh, all wooden, nicely painted. And then we have the five different floors, if you're not counting the base floor here, which is plastic, which is the first thing that you start on. Uh, all this is really thick, sturdy components. Um, so you get five floors from big to smallest. Then you have this weird kind of oblong dice uh, with four different sides to represent all the colors. Uh, this actually happens, it lands like that, and that means it's wild, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the last few components here, this is the hook you'll be using, just thin wire kind of shaped as a hook, but it's pretty sturdy and wood handle. The last bit here is the manual. Pretty straightforward. Again, this is thick paper, so. Great production done by Wiggles 3D. I don't know about the Zoc production, but I'm pretty sure Zoc did a good job as well. So I would have confidence saying that their product is just as good, if not better, than this set. I just, I, this is the set I have. Now let me show you how the game actually proceeds. Let's play Vila Paletti. So here I have Vila Paletti all set up in a tower to kind of give you a visual feel of something that you might be able to, to accomplish. Uh, this is a game of construction chaos, it says on the box there. So. So yeah, that is basically the, the goal. That is the structure that we want to try to complete, but this game is not at all cooperative. Um, the thing that I like about Vila Paletti is this is basically four games packed into one. There are so many different variants that you can play, and it does alter it enough to keep it interesting. Either, either way, this game has high replayability without all four different variants. So let me start with the most basic of rules. What you're trying to accomplish on your turn is simply taking a post and putting it on the very top of the construct. Let me go over the points variation. The skinnies are worth one point. The hexes are worth two points. And the big chunkers, well, they're worth three points. So if you're able to accomplish putting one of these up here, you get that many points for that turn. So the big ones are pretty sought after. So you'll continue to do this, uh, going around the table, taking turns, pulling the post out. Um, the rules about pulling the posts is you cannot touch another post or you forfeit your turn. You can also use this nifty hook just in case you wanna get in there and wiggle something out. But again, the hook cannot touch another post. You can move other posts with 
the actual post itself that's legal but any extension of you beyond said post is illegal and you forfeit your turn so that is the breakdown of the basic rules so that's the basis of how to pull out posts now let me go over some of the variants and then I'll go into the floor explanation and how those work in the random game you're going to be rolling this dice here and this chooses what color post you have to grab so you can get the chunker if it's available but again you can only take from the bottom never from the utmost top but you can take from multiple levels up from the bottom but i'll get into that later so that's random play designated color is you can only choose one color per player so four players and you can only pull that post so if i was a green player i can only pull pull the green post so that is the other play the third player is freestyle you just pick any post you want kind of like jenga so that is how that works and, and um, tournament play is also something that is a variant but i'll get into that in a second as i'm going over the floor explanation okay um so floors again you cannot grab the floor as you're pulling out so that's illegal as well um so say i was playing the random game and i rolled a red and I see that there's only one red under there, but it's in the middle, and I'm not too sure that I want to pull this out. So on my turn, I can take either one of two actions. The first one is, I showed you here, the pulling post action, or you can place a floor. And that works like this. I'm deciding not to pull that red one. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make a floor. And let's say nobody challenges me. I'll get into challenges later. I take the next biggest floor, which is the green one here, and I place it like so. Now, I have the opportunity to grab any post I want at this point. I have an opportunity to grab a wild. Even though I rolled a re red, I placed a floor successfully without knocking over the tower, and I get my choice in picking any post that I want. This is where you will want to stre strategically place it off one of these chunkers here and pull it and get three points so I, I mentioned challenges this is why the other players don't want you to do that because you're gonna get three big points and have your pick and choose of what you want to do and have control of the game they can say I want to challenge you so instead of building that floor let's say that floor is already there, already there and I said I don't want to pull a red one right now I want to build a floor and somebody says I can take that red post right here no problem and the um, in our house it's the first person who says it because multiple people will try to say it um, and if you it, get into a dispute always the person to the left of the current player they get the first decision so when you challenge you take that person's turn basically and you have to go in and get this red one here now I'm moving this all with my hand and I pretty much forfeited my turn but if I was successful I get their points and then play continues to the next person that was in rotation they forfeit their turn you gain their points but if you so happen to knock over the tower on that turn of the challenge you will get the negative benefits which are negative five points see Fila Paletti's played over multiple rounds three normally and so knocking the tower is not the end of the world you only get negative five points but that can mean the game in the end honestly but if you do it on your turn as well not challenging somebody you also get the negative benefits so challenging is a part of tournament play that's what I mentioned a little earlier in the vi video so that's another variant and the only way that I will play I will never play this non tournament style without challenging it's just it's kind of a staple for me so yeah the rounds can end fast or they continue and go on for a very long time and you can get to this tiny red floor which I've done a few times uh, and it's very satisfying You'll continue to play over the few rounds, um, and after all that, the person with the most points at the end of the game wins. So, do I think Vila Paletti deserves the Spiel des Jahres Award 2012 for best board game of the year? I don't know, let me tell you. So, Vila Paletti. Hmm. 
And as we always do in game buying, I'm gonna be giving this game a letter grade or a percentage. What did I give Vila Paletti? Well, it's a dexterity game. It won awards. Probably should be good. Probably a good grade. I would say it's a good grade. 90%, which is a low A. And uh, I've given other dexterity games higher. Uh, but Vila Paletti has a certain charm to it. Even though it hasn't been my highest ranked dexterity game of all time, it does have a special place in my heart for it. Um, does it deserve the Spieldus Yaris Award? Probably not. I don't know the other games that it was competing against. I should have done my research, but I don't know. Does this game deserve an award? Absolutely. This game deserves a few awards. It's like, like I said, it has a certain charm to it. And in any dexterity game like award uh, running, I think this would win almost hands down. The colors are great. You're constructing these really wacky, silly floors and with these kind of pur pur curious um, posts. Uh, most of the time you will think that the weight is completely off a post until you go in and grab a post. Again, I forgot to mention, once you commit to a post, you, there's no getting out. You've touched it, it's the post you have to get, just like in Jenga, I think it is. I think that's the same rule. So once you've touched a post, you have to pull it out. And adding floors is really nice mechanism uh, it's the simplicity about this game and I've had crowds gather around me uh, sometimes I just I take um, these posts and with the kiddo me and Alex we just play with them so it kind of doubles out as, as a toy too so uh, I recommend this game for all ages uh, for any lovers of dexterity game and this is a nice staple in anybody's collection of course, Zoc has control of it now and, and is publishing it at this current time, and I'm pretty sure they'll continue to do so because this is a sure win for any game board game publisher. So go out there and pick up a copy. Unfortunately, you cannot find this one, and I mean, really, it's all the same. The rules differ in uh, some Vila Paletti games, though essentially you can find all those online. So if you like the rules of one different Vila Paletti like this one over the Zoc, you can always find the rules. The components are the exact same. So there's not much more I can say about this elegantly designed dexterity game other than I love it and it's gonna be staying with me for the foreseeable future. It has a place on my shelf. And thank you so much for tuning in to this review of Vila Paletti today. My name has been Dave. Please like and subscribe here at the end of the video. I very much would appreciate it. Until the next time that I see you, have a great rest of your day and a great time with all that you play. You heard it here on The Game Vine. I'm out. Hey there everyone, welcome back to Game Vine. My name is Dave and today we're gonna to be taking a look and or reviewing a game of dexterity called